In this video, I want to give you the five mistakes to avoid if you're trying to sell any product or service. See, over the last few years, I've built several multi eight figure businesses. I learned a lot about sales and I made a lot of mistakes and that's why I'm putting this video together so you can avoid those same mistakes because experience is the best teacher, but it doesn't have to be your experience. All right. So you can learn from my mistakes. I failed for your sins. Kind of like Jesus. The difference between me and Jesus is I'll fuck you up at a moment's notice. The first mistake that people make when they're trying to sell a product or service is not choosing the appropriate marketing method for that product. Let me explain. There are really four types of products or services. There are products that are expensive or inexpensive, right? Then there are also products that people like need, they have to have it to survive. And then there's also products or services that people don't need. They don't need it, but they still buy them. Almost every product or service will fit into one of these categories. So let's think about a product that's inexpensive that people don't need. I would classify these as trinkets. You know, like motherfucking fidget spinners. I remember all the influencers were selling those massage guns. Fucking whoa. shake weight. <laughs> Shit like that. These are like trinkets, right? Then there's products that people actually need and are inexpensive. These are commodities. This is your fucking toothbrush, deodorant, condoms. Then there's products that people need that are expensive. And these are necessities. You gotta have them, right? You go to the doctor, he say your, your back is fucked up. Now you need a bacchiotomy, right? You gotta get the bacchiotomy and it's probably gonna cost a lot of money, right? If you are talking to a qualified bacchiotomist, then there's products that are expensive that people don't need. These are luxuries, luxury items. So this would be something like my Richard Millet watch or one of my Cartier bracelets or one of my diamond chains, shit like that, you know, luxuries. My man Tom bought four Rolls Royces one day. Those are luxuries. He didn't need them and they're expensive, right? Now, when you're trying to sell a product, you got to think about what category it falls in. And people buy things in each of these categories for different reasons. So. When someone is buying a trinket, remember, this is something inexpensive that people don't need. This is impulse, right? You see the influencer shooting that massage gun on his trapezoid and you think, hey, man, Bradley Barton has that. I'm going to get one, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Or you, you see your girl see some fucking Instagram hoe with the in the fucking with the shake weight or the goddamn waist trainer. Oh man, I'll look like her if I get this. And she just buys it right away. You know, just impulse, right? No big deal. Commodities. People most of the time buy this off price. I don't know what kind of toothpaste I even used this morning. <laughs> I don't, I didn't have no decision on what I bought. I just bought the toothpaste. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People usually go off price with this. Right? Now necessities, remember this is something someone needs and it's expensive. Hey, again, we talked about this. It's just your need. Doctor say you need a bacchiotomy. You're going to go to the bacchiotomist and get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so this is based off your needs. All right. You need a place to live. You're going to get that. You're going to have shelter. Right. Now, luxury. This is where it gets interesting. When things are expensive, but people don't need them. Why would somebody buy that? Well, the only reason to buy something like this is status. Anything else they say, they're just trying to justify it because they don't want to say out loud, hey, I bought this for status. <laughs> like, that's it. That is the only reason. This watch is not that much better than a Tudor or even a Rolex, right? But when I wear it, it raises my status amongst people who give a fuck about shit like this. You, It might lower my status amongst some people. Some people may see that shit and be like, oh, man. He's wasted all that money, right? So it depends on who you're marketing to. Cause some people will see this and they think, oh, it's a waste of money and it might lower my status to them. But fuck them, I ain't trying to fuck them. The bitches I'm trying to fuck wouldn't say that, right? Cause they are Latina strippers in the past, long time ago. 
before I got my girlfriend. So if you have a fucking trinket, it's inexpensive people don't need, you gotta appeal to people's impulse. And you do that by attacking dopamine. You gotta attach dopamine to the product or service. You gotta, you gotta find them at the right time at the right place. This is why they have a bunch of bullshit in the counter at the grocery store, like at the checkout, because they're hoping that you or your fucking toddler will see that shit and be like, oh, can I have this, can I have that? And they just impulsive and you just buy that shit to shut the fucking kid up or you buy it because I, I might as well get one of these motherfucking Snicklers or whatever y'all eat, right? You know what I'm saying? Like you got to appeal to people's dopamine. So you got to have, if you're doing some sort of ad, you know, you got to make sure it's hitting people at the right time, the right place. It, it's, it's not impossible, but you can do it. Now, here's the thing. The weird shit about a commodity if you are competing, remember you're competing on price. This is where I hate to be as a product or service, right? This is actually the most difficult area to compete in. Why? Because it's a race to the bottom, right? You're trying to see who can get the lowest price. The problem with a race to the bottom is you might win. And that's why the only people companies who can compete here are people are kind of companies that have near unlimited resources, right? Johnson and Johnson. Procter and Gamble, right? They can just make shit as cheap as possible because they're doing it at such a scale. They don't need huge margins to be profitable. They don't need huge margins to be successful. They can make a little bit of money off each transaction, but because there's so many transactions, it works out. It's difficult for a small business to compete. It's super difficult for a small business to compete in that quadrant. Now, if somebody needs something, now you're competing. You have to focus on quality, right? Because remember, these people need it. And it's expensive. Like you don't want the cheapest laser eye surgeon, right? You don't want, you, I promise you, you don't want the cheapest heart surgeon. <laughs> right, listen, you can get this heart surgery or you can go to Tijuana, <laughs> get that shit for 75% off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, sometimes you get what you pay for and intrinsically people know that, right? So here it's all about quality in this quadrant. Now, when you're in the luxury, quadrant right remember it's all about status no matter what people say i don't give a fuck or they're lying to themselves they may not be they might believe what they say that doesn't mean it's true right they're in the luxury quadrant you got to have some exclusivity right that's one of the main things that it drives luxury purchases right you know for example when my boy tom bought his uh he bought one of his rolls royces i forget which one he said yo this is the first one in north america that's the first thing he said to me about it <laughs> right it's the first one in north america right because that exclusivity is uh it makes things more desirable i remember when i bought my one of my eps it was a, a special edition and, and you know the, i was on the fence until he said man he only made a thousand of these mm -hmm. that means the likelihood of me seeing another motherfucker with this shit it's super low <laughs> so I, I purchased it you know and exclusivity and status they can go hand in hand when things are rare you know it's it's, it's supply and demand when supply goes down demand goes up right and if you have something super rare that most people can't get either because it's not available it's difficult to get or it's expensive that's going to raise your status so rolex does this shit man when motherfuckers try to buy rolexes it's like an arduous task if they try to buy it from an authorized dealer they'll be on the wait list for sometimes years i know a motherfucker who, who was trying to get a daytona rolex and he was on the wait list for seven years <laughs> all right but once he got that it, you know he felt good about it but seven years this is why they go this is why they 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 trade for such high markups on the secondhand market because they know it's, it's exclusive and that exclusivity uh, raises one status makes it easy for him to impress people and get pussy so the key is to understand where your product or service is and approach it with the right strategy you can approach it with the right strategy and you got to define where your product is and make sure that you're methodical with your marketing and your sales strategies when it comes to that another mistake that people make develop a product to sell instead of finding a market to serve let me show you what I mean. So here's an amateur ass entrepreneur. He says, hey man, I'm starting this business and I'm gonna sell this fucking thing, right? I'm gonna sell this thing. And you're all excited about it. You spend all this time on your thing and you're like, hey, you're going up to people say, buy my thing. But a lot of times 
what happens is the entrepreneur didn't even check to see if people were looking for this shit <laughs> right so people people see this shit right and it was like what i don't want that shit <laughs> what what's that <laughs> right, that's just not exciting you know what i'm saying I, i'm not i'm not really feeling that and now he's trying to convince these people to buy his shit a smarter move is to find what people want what they're already looking for and then just give them that shit give them the shit right so if you find out what people want and then give it to them man look what people are checking for and then give them that shit <laughs> right so this this shit don't be working but i see uh, entrepreneurs do it all the time this is what works let me give you an example when i was first starting my youtube page all right i didn't just start making workout videos and hope people fucking found them and liked them what i did was let me bring it up so we go to so let's go to oldest youtube Yo, what I did was I went on Google Analytics keyword tool, key Google search, and I, I found out what people were searching for. Cardio, burn fat, fast, right? Uh, how to build muscle and burn fat. That was one of the highest search terms, how to build muscle and burn fat. So guess what? Almost all my fucking videos were how to build muscle, burn fat, or how to get a six pack fast. And I, I went, what people were searching for, that's why I put six, I spelled it. <laughs> and i wrote the number right i went and saw what people were searching for you can find this data on youtube and i made videos around what people were searching for trx was real popular back time so i was making shit about trx you know what i'm saying you look at all my titles they're super keyword focus search term focus because that worked really well back in the day right so i, I could have just said hey chair dips instead i said hey chair dips exercise to build size strength chest shoulders and try like that's just me keyword spamming the title but this should work this should this should work initially i'm not saying this this the same strategy you work now on youtube the premise is the same i found what people were looking for and gave them that instead of just trying to give them whatever i made so i see this shit all the time in business or marketing or even social media people say man i'm trying to grow my social media man how do i get more followers and i'm just like yo why, why should people follow you can you tell me that uh, okay, because um, uh, are you giving them what they want, <laughs> motherfucker? No, well, that's why they they're not following you. Listen, when you see one of these fucking badass Instagram bitches with fucking million followers and shit, I've had sex with some of these people, and some of them, not all of them, are dumb as rocks, <laughs> right? They don't know how the algorithm work. Bitch can't spell algorithm, <laughs> right? <laughs> they don't they they don't have no fucking tactics, no strategy. What's the best time to post? They just posting badass pictures of themselves. Guess what? That's what the market wants. Big titties bitches. Images and videos of big titty bitches. And guess what? They with social media fucking grows. And some of these chicks, they start a OnlyFans or something. And it's like they don't have to fucking think too hard, right? They what they already know that guys want to see bare titties and then busting it open from the comfort of their own phone. <laughs> so it works. They're giving the market what they want. Hey, we need that shit, man. I got that shit. Instead of, but what I said, see so many entrepreneurs doing that, they're, they're trying to force a round pig in a square hole. Pause, all right? You got to find out what they want and then give it to them, all right? So you got to start doing market research. You got to see what's going, what, what, what people are buying in the market, what people are searching for, and try to solve a problem that the target market has. Because business is all problem solving. Um, I needed a mic. That would, that, that would make my voice sound amazing on the podcast and sure solve that problem for me right i needed a bunch of devices and computers to broadcast this shit apple solved that problem for me right you find a market and solve problems that they have instead of trying to create the market that's a that's a big problem that, that's a big mistake i see entrepreneurs make the third mistake that entrepreneurs make is they don't understand the relationship between marketing and sales so check this out. Some businesses, the marketing is super good. So the sales doesn't have to be very good, right? If the marketing is really strong, the sales does not have to be strong. For example, Apple computers, you go into the iStore, these motherfuckers have not been trained by the Wolf of Wall Street, <laughs> right? These motherfuckers are basically just order takers, right? They might know about the product and they'll answer your questions and help you decide what's best for you but you probably came in sold right you weren't just looking around you probably came in wanting to buy some eye shit right and you walked out with an iphone right 
but the marketing did that job, you know? Then some, some companies are the opposite where the marketing is trash. It works because the sales are really strong. These are companies that have like door to door salesmen or companies that are cold calling. Any company that has their salespeople cold calling leads, they do not have strong marketing. It just, it, you know, it's okay. If the sales is good enough, it'll still work. Now, okay, ideally, you'd want both to be strong, but you almost never see this. Why? Because you don't need to, right? If one of them is really good, the other one doesn't have to be really good. Here's the thing. This is the most difficult one, trying to make the marketing so strong that your salespeople are just order takers. This is the easiest and the cheapest. <laughs> like if your sales is really good, you can, it can cover a lot of sins, all right? But in a perfect world, you wanna get good at both. You wanna be good at both. So you gotta understand marketing and sales, but be good at sales doesn't mean you should neglect marketing, right? Because the marketing will make the sales you want your salespeople as close to order takers as possible. Because if you can do that, then you're like Apple and you don't need to have good salespeople. This one is the best, but it's the hardest. This one, it's easier. It's not easy. It's easier and it's quicker. This is really what you're shooting for. If you can get this down, you can really make it happen. And the key is the marketing for the companies that do this right. They know what quadrant they're in and they know how to market to those people. So I don't think he is right now, but the CEO, of LVMH, they owned Fendi, Louis Vuitton, Tiffany, and a bunch of other huge brands. They are in this category, right? Expensive shit that people don't need, right? Their marketing is really well, right? They they can they market the status, they make it they make the shit seem, you know, very desirable to people with that demographic, you know, to their target market. But when you go in there, right, the salespeople, they they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. They're not, they're not in there fucking around. Some of them suck. Some of them are just order takers, but uh, the best ones, and it's all luxury stores. Like the, my chick at Gucci, the, my salesperson at Gucci, she sends me Father's Day cards, she be <laughs> free gifts <laughs> on, on the holidays and shit, you know, because they, you know, they know what's up, man. They, they know that they, they want to keep me in. That's, that's a sales tactic. People buy from people they know, like, and trust. She wants me to buy from her instead of any other Louis, any other Gucci. My, my my salesperson at Louis Vuitton, when I come, when, uh, they invite me to all the events, they give me special treatment, shit like that. They invite me to the big fashion show. You know, I was sitting across from uh, Dave Portnoy and <laughs> shit, you know. They go super hard with the marketing and the sales, is what I'm trying to say. And they're one of the most profitable companies of all time. Apple takes this approach, but either one of them can work. You just got to understand the relationship. If you lack in one of these, you got to be stronger in the other one, right? But you should never neglect the other one because this business is indestructible. The fourth mistake entrepreneurs make is not making their product good enough. So again, if the marketing is good enough, the sales is easy, but the best marketing is an amazing product. So for a long time, Tesla did not have a marketing budget. According to Elon Musk, the CEO, he said they put all of that budget into R and D to try to make the best cars. Now they still did marketing, right? They, you know, little stunts and, Elon is always doing some wacky shit. I mean, he's a fucking genius, right? But they just wanted to make the best cars. And at the time, it was the best electric car, right? For, for a period, there was no electric car that was better. I don't know if there's one now. And it was a status symbol too, right? But it was a status because one, it was expensive. You know, not a lot of people had them. I remember at one point. And it was a different kind of status. It was also, oh man, you got one of these, you give a fuck about the environment. So you get like a different kind of status. With, with Tesla, at least at one point. And there was a certain amount of exclusivity. He built a multi-billion dollar company with no marketing budget. They just built the best shit. So when you're thinking about developing your product, remember, you wanna find people who already want your shit and then give it to them. But if it's really good, they'll tell others about it. Word of mouth marketing is the most powerful marketing. Because if I tell you some shit is good, but I'm trying to sell it to you, yeah, you might not believe me. But if one of your homies says it's good, Right. Somebody, you know, like and trust tells you is good. So when you've been friends with for a long time, then you're, you're way more willing to to accept that as true. You get what I'm saying? So it's way more powerful marketing. You got to make your shit so good that people talk about it. If you can do that, it makes everything so much easier. And then if you get testimonials from clients. So in my business, a high ticket trainer, that's my business where I teach trainers how to build their online business. We really focus on making sure the customers succeed 
not just because we want them to succeed. I mean, we do, obviously, but we need them to succeed so they can give us a testimonial. That's why I'm posting testimonials every day on my Instagram. New motherfuckers too. Motherfuckers people ain't seen every day because I have an infinite amount of them because we focus on making the product good and we focus on making the product better every year. You get what I'm saying? And because of that, we can charge a premium because one, no one's as good as us. They can't be. <laughs> you won't find a human who's been doing online training as long as me. So I, I, I know it like the back of my hand because I was one of the pioneers, but also we go super hard to make sure our, our students succeed. It's not all altruistic, right? Like <laughs> if they succeed, we make more money because we get the testimonial. So our incentives are aligned, but yours are aligned with your clients too, right? If you start giving an amazing experience to your clients, they're going to tell the people about it. They're going to leave reviews. It'll make your marketing so much stronger. So really focus on making your product or service as good as possible and that never stops you want to keep improving it at all times and then the fifth thing even though i talked more, a lot about marketing and this the fifth thing is actually learning sales because marketing and sales are two different things the problem is getting really good at marketing is super difficult it takes time and it's probably gonna take a lot of money not only to learn but also to do it effectively but if you're good at sales it covers a lot of sins you know, if I wasn't good at sales initially, my businesses would not have succeeded because I didn't have a marketing budget. I, I didn't know how to do ads for a long time. And I was just focused on social media, but social media takes a long time to grow, but I was able to succeed because I knew how to do sales really good. Uh, you have to learn sales. If you can learn sales, then it makes the whole entrepreneurship journey so much easier. And if you want to learn that, I have a video just check out right now about how to become an amazing salesperson. All right, check that out now.